in Christ this Christmas season, it is our duty and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels and to go in heart and mind to Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us hear again from Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our sin until the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make this house of prayer glad with our carols of praise. But first, because this of all things would rejoice Jesus' heart, let us pray to him for the needs of the whole world and all his people. For peace upon the earth he came to save, for love and unity within the one church he did build, for goodwill among all peoples. And particularly at this time, let us remember the poor, the cold, the hungry, the oppressed, the sick, and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, and all who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore, and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in this Lord Jesus we forevermore are one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words that Jesus Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our To a people longing for hope and yearning for deliverance, the prophet Isaiah declared, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Tonight we come seeking hope, peace, joy, and love, and we find these things in a child. 
God made flesh as a baby in a manger, a baby who is both the beginning and the end of our salvation, who dwells with us even now, our Emmanuel, God with us. We light these candles as signs of our shocking hope, our just peace, our fierce joy, the love that transforms us, and Jesus Christ, our wondrous light. May the light burning in our hearts guide us, comfort us, protect us, and tend us in all seasons and circumstances, reminding us that day and night, in the light and the darkness, God is with us. Our salvation has come. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me. She gave me from fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. To Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return from the ground, since from it you were taken. You are dust, and to dust shall you return.
It may. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have in, enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever.
But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me, one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and he will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. And he will be our peace when the Assyrians invade our land and march through our fortresses. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your, word to be, may your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her.
those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. And she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them.
hills nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Together, let us pray. 
Eternal God, by the birth of Jesus Christ, you gave yourself to the world. Grant that being born in our hearts, he may save us from all our sins and restore within us the image and likeness of our Creator, to whom be everlasting praise and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. So, my friends, Christmas is about Jesus. I know, news alert, right? But Jesus is so much more than that for which we often settle. As we see in the first chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus existed before there was anything. Jesus chose to come to earth as one of us, to shine in dark places and bring hope to the hopeless. Does any of you know darkness today? Does anyone need a word of hope? I suspect that all of us do. So tell me a little about your light. Reflect about your light, your hope. Tell us about who or what is king of your life. Is it the unchanging, ever-constant king of kings? Because whether you hear it every day or once a year, Jesus does not change. Jesus is love and grace. Jesus is holy and perfect. Jesus is salvation and hope. Jesus is truth and forgiveness. Jesus is light and life. Jesus is all of that and so much more. We serve a holy God, a perfect being who is constant, who is stable, who doesn't wax and wane with the circumstance because he is king and lord for lords. Jesus is for everyone. Jesus does not discriminate. Jesus is for you and for me. It was a simple scene that first Christmas, a rough place, a young couple and nothing but a feeding throw in which to put, to put the child. It wasn't exactly the hallmark moment we like to show in Christmas pageants and movies, but this rustic scene marked the greatest event in the history of the world. The angel announced good news for all people. Luke chapter 2, verse 10. God's son became fully human and came to earth to save us. God had promised to send a Messiah, one who would save his people. He could have easily burst on the scene as a full-grown man, a seven-foot warrior with fiery eyes and arms of steel. This was what many people were looking for, but it wasn't how God did it. He arrived in the arms of a young girl. He was, as one author put it, a very small package wrapped in rags given from the heart of God, the perfect gift. God gave his only son to live a perfect life and die a sacrificial death. 
in our place. So we, in all our brokenness, could know forgiveness. He came so we could know what love feels like. Real love. Love that never leaves. Love that never disappoints. Love that never betrays. Love that has no conditions. Love that never gives up. Love that never runs out. God sent Jesus into a corrupted world to bring us hope. God's love for humanity is indeed boundless and unconditional. So, how are you doing this Christmas? Are you having difficult, a difficult time finding hope in our community, wherever we belong? Finding hope in the world? Are you having a difficult time finding peace? Are you limping along in pain and brokenness? Are you living far away from God? It doesn't have to be that way. God came near in Jesus. You can have peace and find hope. You can receive healing and redemption. You can know forgiveness and life through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You can receive Jesus right here, right now, by faith through prayer. Praying is simply talking to God, and God knows your heart. And God isn't so concerned with your words as God is the attitude of your heart. Here is a suggested prayer. Lord Jesus, I want to know you personally. Thank you for leaving heaven and coming to earth as a baby. Thank you for living a perfect life and showing us what love looks like. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I open the door of my heart and life to you and ask you to come in as my Savior and Lord. Take control of my life. Thank you for forgiving my sin filling me with your spirit and giving me eternal life. Bring peace into my world this Christmas. Make me the kind of person you want me to be. Amen. And so my friends, everyone celebrates Christmas, but no one celebrates it like those who realize that Jesus came for them. If this prayer that I just read expresses the desire of your heart this Christmas Eve, pray it right now. I invite you to do so. And Christ will come into your life just as he promised. As your pastor, it is my prayer that you will experience the freshness of God's love in your heart today and always. Let me close by wishing all of you, each one of you, a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to, all, to you all.
On this day that has become synonymous with gift giving, let us reflect on the gifts of love, hope, joy, and peace. Let us respond to the generosity of the giver of all things beautiful. Let us give generously to share God's beauty in our community. So let us pray. Generous God, we give thanks for all the beautiful resources you have given to us. Let our gifts bring glory and honor to you and beauty and peace to your creation. Amen.
when the song of the angel, angels is still, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among others, to make music in the heart. Go in hope, peace, joy, and love to spread the beauty of Christmas. Amen.